All right, so we go last map, game five, invasion search for all the marbles to make it to champs finals. So obviously this is our map pick. Once again, we are really comfortable on invasion. You know, even though New York really liked it as well, we were just so confident on it. And the last time we played up and matched against them, it was a round 11 where uh, I think Ken like gives up a cross uh, towards this side of the map. Like it was like a, a post plan situation. He gave up the cross for like one second, didn't get the kill. The guy ended up killing our guy and bomb. And we, lo we lost the map online. So we were still comfortable on the map. And that was like the only time we had lost it for a really long time. So we picked the map. I was actually really surprised that they picked offense. They, they ended up doing it in the, the grand finals as well, but they picked offense round one. And in my opinion, I just always thought defense was better, even round one, even with no trophies. Um, so this is what happened here. So it's a square up. they're so going to do it, just a standard break. This You see every team do this. Watch the cross. One guy go mannequin or, you know, sometimes gas. Two guys, you know, one guy could go top blue. One guy could go treehouse. That was kind of like the standard break. And for us, we had two guys going to play towards B-side. You know, Ken and Ant were always going to be towards B. You know, Ant always making his way up to Broken. Brandon's going to be watching our A-street. AG liked to play around, you know, the standy spot or in cafe or, you know, somewhere around, you know, A, S, and D. So that was our, our main, you know, standard spread. So they don't have the bomb right now. They're going to have to go back and pick up the bomb, but they're trying to just feel out to see what what we're doing on our on our side and they realized yesterday when so i don't know why they didn't pick up bomb i'm not sure why that was the case but now caesar has to go back and, and pick it up gonna force them to play a little bit slower kids is just lurking on the side towards the cafe it looks like they're trying to work ant towards the broken side they don't see him yet but they know he's somewhere here and ants using this this jump spot that he was kind of saving for champs and I don't even think they see him in this round, so he ends up using it again later on. But they're just taking this super slow on offense. Just trying, again, trying to feel us out in round one. Now, they don't see anything that they like B-side, so they figured, you know, Ant's probably in broken. We know Ken plays towards B-side. Let's try and hit through mid. Let's try and work mid, uh, like work middle of the map, work B-dom. But as this is happening, Dante gets picked by by Ken. Huge pick because that that pick kind of sets them off of what they they're trying to do towards middle because you know they get blooded. So they kind of you know they're still sticking to this middle thing, but they have one less person that they can work with. Brandon sees Kismet cross over to the tank now. Ag is still hiding underneath this little uh, half wall over here. So he's just chilling. We call we would call this standy spot because we, you know, at the beginning of the year saw standy using it. So we just figured, you know, let's call this corner standy spot. And he still hasn't shown himself. So he's just waiting for them to make a play, make some type of action. They, they have 30 seconds to work and get the bomb down. He's going to still constantly hold this and work off of his ARs. You know, he sees Ken shooting at someone back cafe. He ends up going and repositioning himself towards his truck now. They still haven't hit anything. Skies now hits towards the back door because kids or because Paco didn't see anything back door at first. You know, A or AG is making this activation to make this, you know, movement here. And since, you know, he's not getting any information from Paco that this guy's here, he doesn't know that he's here. So that little timing where you know Paco gives it up, gives AG an opportunity to get this guy. He gets him weak. He just starts chasing him, kills him. That's bombed down with 15 seconds left as well. 4v2. We know that you know we just need to make sure that they can't plant the bomb. So we're just looking for kills anywhere towards B Dom and Cafe. We can just teamwork B Dom here. Paco and Kiz both there, and uh, we get those kills. Big first round. Big first defense. You know, always great to get the first round on the board. We go to round two. So once, once again, like, kind of like what I was talking about, standard spread where you have one guy watch the cross, top blue, mannequin, kind of a free floater. You could go towards, uh, you know, broken or you could go towards the A side. It, going into this specific map, uh, when we were talking about game planning this, we kind of want to just hit a a little bit more often uh, because that was what's what was working for us a lot of the times when we were playing this map 
and we had gone into the cycle of consistently just playing off the cross and then going B or ending off B. But we had really done well when we were trying to work towards A side. And I want to talk about this specific play over here. So you would see Ann and AG do this uh, every now and then where they would go towards laundry, start proning and like army crawling inside uh, of laundry. So one, one person would kind of bait the other person. See, so you see Paco and, and Skies are both working this towards A Street. This is a perfect counter towards their play because Ann and AG are both looking for people towards this fire car and towards the A Street to bait them out with what they're trying to do here. So they're in the gunfight. Paco is trying to shoot at Ant because he sees him over here, but AG has already got this positioning pushed up towards the front of the window. He can now pop up, kill Paco. So they're just, you know, playing one off of each other. Ant gets away for free. Paco isn't, you know, aware of AG. AG gets the free kill on Paco. And then Brandon is also gas tank here. He sees, you know, Caesar trying to be deep towards the A side, towards his car. Guns Caesar. Now we get two first bloods for free on, on our offense. Again, offensively sided, or sorry, defensively sided map. Offenses aren't that, uh, that easy to come by. Offensive wins. Kismet tries to make a play towards front mannequin. AG sees him because he's still here. He gets the pistol kill. Free A site. 4v1. Easy. But it's a really good, basically like a, I wouldn't, I guess it's a blind counter, but it's, it's just a really good counter to anyone trying to get pushed up A Street like that, or anyone trying to get pushed up Front Cafe. If they're trying to do something aggressive towards that side, it's, it completely fucks them over, especially if you get the timing with AG getting pushed up first. So go up 2-0. Like we saw for map number two, AG and Brandon are kind of going to try and do a similar thing where they get pushed up A, but they're, they're, they're just trying to throw their nades. And because what they're trying to do is throw their nades gas so that AG can kind of try and get pushed up and get some type of aggressive push towards um, the, the laundry, like childish laundry window, basically. Once again, Ken and Age or Ken and Ant on the other side of the map, going towards B side. Ken was our, you know, anchor B side player, con consistently over there. Brandon's gonna wrap towards middle. Ken gets shots off on Kiz. He's getting shot back down. So this is an opportunity for Ant to play a little bit safer because they're they're already in broken. They've they've already crossed to it. So there's no point in Ant like actually going there himself. He hits a guy with a nade. He's gonna play just safe construction, and we're gonna work off AG here. AG has gotten pushed up all the way up into their base, and now he is just going to be an absolute nuisance in their base. They know he's here because they, they've, they can, they've seen his, his shots uh, towards the gas tank because Caesar, you know, was playing over towards top blue. He repositions himself towards the back over here. They're still watching for possibility of AG to do something towards their backside, but AG's already pushed up towards the top gas plat. And since they've, you know, they've, they haven't pushed up towards B site because we sent two people there. It's hard to, you know, just bully out the B site with us playing safe over here. Two guys here. So now we need to get information middle in case they do end up wrapping. You see, Ann has taken the space towards Broken because they've given it up. He sees that they've backed up with what, Ann, or with what Ken is seeing. AG is no showing, just making sure that he can try and find some type of rotators from them. He's eventually going to stand up right here, sees Sky's DVD. He actually doesn't get the kill, but he gets him super weak. Sees another guy hit up towards the mid tank. This is where Brandon has to come up huge because he's the one on our back wall, kind of our safety net over here. He's going to be able to see, you know, B Dom and at the tank here, and it's gonna he's gonna to have to rely on the other two guys B side to take the space that was given up by New York and push through on the pinch. So we're, we're basically having three guys pinch and Brandon take um, out like save or play safety net on our side. So we haven't been able to get any kills, but we know they're basically trapped in this, you know, area over here. A hundred percent. They cannot be in any th anywhere outside because that everything else is covered for us. So this is just a huge huge retake out of us they have someone mid tank but they have no one watching you know the full inside dvd door pinch like this like you have one guy watching the bomb from the back door you have one guy watching for ag uh through this back you know front cafe door you have 
some guy playing safe mannequin, but you don't have anyone watching B Dom. And so Ken knows this guy is still B Dom because of AAG's call up from before. He can slide out and try and chow this. He gets kill, or a kill on Sib for free. Now they're activating. Caesar is back mannequin. He tries to find AG. AG sees him. Now he can work off of Ant here. Ant can now try and work off of AG. He gets the kill. Boom, two kills go down. On the other side, Ken gets another kill, front cafe, because this guy chows him. He chows the front, uh, or the side, the, side, the, the side door cafe. Ken kills him for free. 4v1 now. Perfect retake. That's just taking the space out of everywhere else on the map and kind of confining them to that one area. And it all starts with AG getting fully pushed up over here. These guys taking are like knowing the space that they can take towards the B side and us just converging kind of from all areas. So perfect, perfect retake. They still don't even have a kill yet. So perfect first three rounds, honestly. Where has this been for Optic? We're just really comfortable on this map. It's it was our bread and butter. Now we go up 3 0. And we're going into offense. So Right there, we met him at Top Golf. He's a big optic fan. Same thing, same default. I remember the face, but top not kind of want to again be aggressive a little bit more towards his A side because that's where we were having our success on. We see that's the people the cross. Attack. Ken gets information top blue that this guy is Stop, all the way towards construction. This is a default setup for New York. We know that they're not in DVD because you know Ken wall bangs it. Nothing crazy anymore. Two, two split, and now we're two, expecting two, them to be playing on uh. Yo, B Dom. One kill. This is a default setup. Yo, Optic Texas back on the attacking side, but if you're Kenny, you're playing for one kill. This is a default setup for New York. Nothing crazy anymore. Two two split. So we're taking our time here. We're gonna work cafe. Skies is gonna watch mid from deep at park. Hydrant is playing right on top of the A site, which will cause a little bit of shifting in terms of how the A defense works, but for the most part, this is calm for New Ant and AG get AG or sorry, Ant and AG get Ant to the back door. So AG is now going to help Ken out towards the B Dom area, while Ant works the back door. New York. And we still have cover towards the A Street side because Brandon is also here. It's very so once again, our our hate our A hits are were what we were trying to work on in this specific map because it was just what was bringing us good success earlier in the year. And we get a nade hit marker. So we know this guy is somewhere around the bomb. So he could either be standing spot, he could be in one of these creds, but we he know we know he's weak somewhere around the bomb. Kenny sees him standing spot, gets some shots off, but Ken gets super weak. Ant smokes this out. He doesn't see Paco push up, so we know that he's still towards the back court. And this is just about Kenny catching the defense, rotating over from the B side of the map. AG is now in a 1v1 with Skies because he pushed up to the patio. We still haven't got the bomb down, mind you. And he's still, he's super weak. He needs help because there's two guys here. Ant's going to try and get the bomb down. Meanwhile, Ken is now playing towards a pinch. He's moved away from uh, B Dom because he got weak, weakened over there. So he's going to play top blue and just play, or I think that's bottom blue. Just play for anyone that might be pinching from B side. Still keeps his life. Bomb going to get planted. I'm surprised they didn't run at AG here. I think they're just so worried about Brandon possibly still being on the fire car, but he's actually moved towards Cafe. So they don't they don't just ape AG in this corner, even though he's super weak. I think, you know, Caesar's trying to get an angle on him, but he can't see him. We get the bomb down, which is huge and massive. Now we just play post plant. Ken, huge one-on-one -on -one with Paku here. We knew he was towards Standy Spot. He eventually you know, worked his way over towards the A Street, but he went back towards this back corner. Get a, a huge first blood by Ken. And now he can stay alive towards Mannequin. Staying alive there is, is massive. Ant's going to stay on bomb because they need to clear him before they can get onto bomb. So he knows he can just play a one-on-one -on, -one on the bomb. Unfortunately, he does die to Kiz. And it's a really awkward scenario for, for AG because he's in a one-on-one -on -one with Caesar. But this is a not a 1v1 he should be winning or even being like contending with because Caesar can play this pretty well and he has help from Kiz who had just got the kill off of Ant. So this is just unfortunate because of the scenario where, you know, Brandon is still in cafe. And he can't really help either Ant or AG in this specific scenario. Great. Fred's also in 
So AG is just trying to run at this guy, and I'm thinking he's just going to die here. Brandon ends up winning the one-on-one -on -one with Kismet because Kismet doesn't try and look for uh, AG. He's just trusting, uh, you know, Caesar to win this gunfight, and he's going to have to win a, another gunfight on either Ken or, you know, Brandon. Brandon wins the one-on-one, -on -one, which is massive, huge kill by, by Brandon. And then there's another one-on-one -on -one gunfight, and I think Ken is even expecting Dante here, but he loses the one with his pistol. So it's a 2v2, AG's in a weird scenario, he dies because it's, you know, just obviously a losing scenario for any, anyone that's weak like this, with him having better positioning, and we have to kind of run at him. Or, like, we didn't technically have to run at him, but um, he's just so weak, and he's just trying to find a, a good gunfight with Caesar. Brandon gets a trade that can end up dying to, so now it's just a 1v1, time's ticking. And Brandon can just play time here. He has a trophy, I'm pretty sure, too. Like he can just he can just chill behind the tank. Caesar has to defuse, he's not on the defuse. And we just win. I think Ant was even just like, you know, go for the kill. I think in the columns he just said go for the kill. Brandon hits him with a little one or two pump, maybe. <laughs> but a huge one by Roos. Again, another offensive victory. We're up 4-0 now. We're looking really good. Once again, similar thing. We're probably going to send, you know, Ant up to go to Broken. Ken's going to watch over to see if anyone crosses to Broken themselves. They can teamwork the B side. AG plays a little bit deeper now. He's going to play at the deep corner. And, and uh, Brandon, instead of playing at the fire car, he's kind of hiding himself here at the white car. I don't even know what to call this one, but you have to have it. They stun him though. So, <laughs> unfortunately, the, the, the gig is up. They know he's here. He's kind of he's kind of trapped. Unfortunately, he doesn't win the gunfight, but it was that was just a good tack. Like them, them tacking him out there is kind of crazy because I swear he, he never plays this white car. But you know, good on New York for for just being keen on their. On like, you know what what could be happening on the map. Kizma gets a good kill. AG's gonna refill this, but they see him. He gets a kill on Kiz, which is insane. But he gets trade out by Skies. Uh, you know that's just trade battles on the A site. So now, you know our two B guys have to kind of rotate, and they already have the A site control. So it's not the best. Two v three. They have the HP control. They have B Dom. This number six guy can work with this guy B Dom as well. It's just, you know, them being in the right places to trade with each other. Dante gets two to end the round. So, 4-1. That honestly just comes down to them, you know, hard counting with that stun, honestly. Them figuring out what Don where uh, Brandon is and isolating him. So, big thing. On this offense, we're kind of motioning B-side this time. But we're going to have Brandon play late P3. So they know that Kismet pushes up into Broken here. We're already pushed up to DVD ourselves. And tries to do the jump. He misses it, but it's it's this weird, awkward scenario where he does the jump and Kiz is already there. So they kind of both back up with each other. We see Paco playing the mid tank too at a certain point. Ken uses his streak. He can get the information. He actually gets a kill on Caesar. I think uh, does Caesar not think that he can? All right, I think he's probably trying to get inside, but he doesn't think he can die from this angle or something. Because I I feel like once the once this cruise comes in, you go pack palace. I think he's dead either way. I don't know if there's any way he could actually live in this scenario. But good good streak on Ken. He now gives information to us. He gives the information to Brandon that this guy's back cafe too. Brandon pushes up because he's playing late P3. As soon as you know Paco tries to activate towards the A, S, and D side, uh, Brandon gets a free kill. So 2v4 now. Last two guys alive are just hiding ice cream. If we want, we can just rotate it to A. If not, we can just run at these guys, and I think that's what they end up doing. AG runs at this guy. Brandon is, is at the you know the spawn kill tank. Towards the left side of the map, towards A S and D, or towards A search, or A search, A street. Teamwork, kids, because he just stays alive. Last guy alive is back ice cream uh, 
Packers can wall. AJ gets a kill on that. That's just a streak in, it, in his hands. The streak ends up just winning us the round. We open everything up with it. We can just abuse where their, you know, where their personnel is. Now we go on a defense. Again, defense will be side of map. Up 5-1. They're going to try and attack it A-side. Once again, two guys, Cafe. Same thing for us. Nothing any, any different. We either you know, play safe B or we have Anko to Broken. Ken plays the same thing, helping him out towards Ice Cream. Brandon watching our Ace Street and AG back in his standy spot. No showing. Basically, uh, I think the same thing we did in round one. Round one defense. Kiz slides onto Bomb. Because a or because Ken doesn't see anything B side, he's gonna take this timing to push up to mid cut himself, and he can kind of cross with AG here. So this is a really good teamwork play to, you know, take this space that's being given to you, especially if they're not coming B. We know that they're like trying to work A. So he takes that space. He starts shooting kids on bomb. Paco's gonna try and activate that or. Sorry, AG is going to activate on that. I'm surprised Paco doesn't activate towards uh, the mid cut, but I, I'm assuming he just assumes AG is trying to play towards standy spot or, or towards, or they're going to have someone towards the back mid cut here uh, because that's what we were doing. So there's not really a way that Paco can just freely run onto him like that. But because Ken gets shots down, this allows AG to take the, the risk of actually playing this guy on the bomb site, gets a kill on Kismet, bomb is down now. As soon as that happens, Paco has to look for AG. Meanwhile, Ken activates while he's looking for that. He activates mid-cut, kills him V-Dom. Unfortunately, you know, AG does die from it, but we know Bomb is down. Ken can now call in the situation for Brandon to just play with him. So Ken is going to play the cross spot behind the tank. He can watch all of the street and all of anyone that's coming out of Cafe and you know stay alive for free brandon can play in uh the close actually he's gonna he's not gonna go in the deep corner i think he goes in the standing spot they're just gonna cross with each other if you guys watched my invasion s d defense uh play from before the game even came out i'll probably i'll show it to you guys after this but I was talking about this, basically this exact setup. It was a little bit different, obviously, because the, the game played out very different in S&D that moment. But this was like the day one, not even day one, the fucking 2009 setup where you cross like this. You just have, you just play off of each other. Ant's going to be playing lone towards the broken side. He does end up getting killed by, by Dante over here, but they have to get bomb over it towards A. So they can't like just play through, through the B side. Ken gets the kill on Caesar because, you know, Brandon sees him, so they just teamwork him now. They just, you know, ape him as he's trying to finesse his life. He tries to cross back over. Ken kills him. Now it's a 2v1. We know last guy live was, was towards broken side. We see him going front DVD, and that's to get into champs finals. 6-1 victory on the invasion search. Obviously, we were doing well on uh, search throughout the entirety of stage four, but invasion was our bread and butter. We did a lot of prep on that map going to champs and going into that specific series, and it worked out. So that was a, a fucking dub right there.